And now the introductions which are being delivered in the background by the ring announcer, Eric Schoheim. Not Eric Stroheim, as in the old movie star. Goldenberger is introduced. Presumably, the announcer is to make the introductions in both German and English. That remains to be seen. 204 pounds. Hailing from Louisville, Kentucky, USA. The great heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. Working in Muhammad's corner, of course, will be Angie Dundee, along with Ricky Ricky, a gentleman of whom you may not have heard, who is widely regarded as one of the most knowledgeable men in boxing. The key man in the challenges corner will be Wolfgang Mueller, his manager. The judges will be Nat Fleischer, Mr. Boxing in America, editor, editor and publisher of Ring Magazine, along with a German gentleman, Felix Olaf, from the city of Cologne. Teddy Waltham is the referee just introduced. Teddy Waltham, secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control. There will be two timekeepers, by the way, for this fight by request of Angie Dundee. The contestants have been checked for stimulants by request of Angie Dundee, taking every possible safeguard against an alleged home country decision. Angie is a curious man. He is quite possibly the most apparently naive, but completely sophisticatedly knowledgeable man in the history of boxing. And now just called up for an introduction, the gentleman whom you met earlier, Max Schmeling. Max, who saw something in 1936, and indeed he did. And now, the gentleman who is a legend in his time. Joe went to Berlin yesterday, went through the wall. I was told by Barney Nagler, one of America's most respected boxing writers, that over in East Germany, because Barney went with him, it was unbelievable. The people mobbed him even there. And now, you'll remember, the man who won the heavyweight championship at Yankee Stadium in 1959, Ingemar Johansson. Here he comes. He's coming up now into the ring from the far corner, as you can see. Debonair, indeed impeccable in his black double-breasted jacket. Bobby Schultz has just been introduced. Gustav Schultz, in his day, one of the best German fighters ever. Bubby has just come into the ring, and you're not on camera now. Heine Tenhoff, former German heavyweight, shaking hands with Melvin Berger. There's Bubby now coming out right over us. There's the bell, we're ready, French. thought he might come out and go right at Mildenberger more than he has thus far. The action thus far is hardly what you would describe as torrid. That pawing right of Mildenbergers did nothing, didn't reach the champion. Notice that 
The challenger is not truly in a southpaw stance. The right foot is forward, but the arms, the body held squarely, much like Patterson without the peekaboo stance. A little more than halfway through round one. what Mildenberger must look out for, that quick, straight right. He leaves himself wide open for it. There it is again. You can expect the champion to be using that straight right for as long as this fight may last. He has trained diligently with it. Also, look for a quick left, a right-left-right right combination. Three punches in a row, the left hook supposedly the most effective against the South. We are about 30 seconds away from round one. See that? That's the right. He is wide open for it after his lead. champion is going after him. There's no question about it. Earl. And that's the end of round one. At the champion's last training session, I noted that he was sparring against southpaws and practicing moving to the right. I asked him to comment. We're ten seconds away from the beginning of round two. There's been a lot of publicity that the champion really is out to get the challenger quickly. It appears so to me. That's why I said earlier he would, I thought he would start more quickly than indeed he had. the champion. And one minute and ten seconds into round two. There is no fear in Mildenberger and he again got in another good shot. This moment the champion is a little bewildered by that southpaw style. The challenge's right is not, is a pawing jab, it is not a strong jab. So it may seem to be landing more effectively than in fact it is. One minute to the end of round two. Remember in the pre-fight interview, the champion said the style might trouble him for three or four rounds. It is definitely giving him trouble in this one. But always the challenger is open for those straight right and on occasion left. we begin round three a quick glance at most of the score cards around this reporter show that they gave both rounds thus far to the champion 
the last round very closely on the supplemental point system. Protects his face well. He's very concerned. You'll never see him hit to the opponent's body because he won't lower that dog to protect his face. Hildenberger is chasing him well here, but not really connecting as the roars of the crowd might lead you to believe. One minute gone of round three. that he leaves himself open for. A dangerous thing to do. On the other hand, it's up to Muhammad Ali to dispel once and for all the notion that he can punch. Three quick, four, five, six quick right jabs by Mildenberg. The left hook came in there. That time he hurt Ali. One minute to go, round three. He hurt him, he came in after him, and he got slugged himself. To the left, to the right, and the left. I'll tell you this, Ali's not playing with this man. Not at all. Quickly, let me get Joe Lewis in here. Are you surprised, Joe? I'm surprised that, that it was a good fight because, uh, I don't know, uh, I always say that he had a change, but Clay seemed to be that when he wanted to start father, he, he's a much better fighter when he's going father than going back there. Start round four, both scored that last round even. On a 65 degree night here in Frankfurt, West Germany, it has begun to rain. And the champion is beginning to dance more and more as his respect grows for the German challenge. <laughs> Nolan Berger is working very well with the champion's stomach, and there, hurt him! This fight must be surprising, a lot of... Uh, Dugout experts in America. Don't forget, right after this fight coming up, direct from Waco, Texas, the Orange Men of Syracuse against the Bears of Baylor, the opportunity to see Floyd Little, number 44, likely Heisman Trophy winner in his very first game of the college football season. that Ali has been saying he's concerned about a southpaw. He may not have been just building up the belt. One minute to go in round four. That was a good left shot to the champion's face. The right paw again. Champion holding momentarily in the corner. to the champion's face. Champ 
double, two straight lefts and a quick right, two more left. Puffiness is beginning to show under each eye of the challenger. That's the end of round four as we focus on Carl Mildenberger coming to his corner who is putting up a much, much better fight than anybody had any reason to anticipate. Fifth round underway. The syndicated columnist of the New York Post, Milton Gross, has just joined us at ringside and we'll be bringing him in for some quick analysis after one of the next two rounds. continues to circle in this bout, mainly to the right. Just doesn't make sense. That, of course, is the Mildenberger technique. Maybe that's what he thought he saw. A couple of quick right jams, bend the head, come in with the left to the body. A minute and a half gone of round five. This fight begins to show evidence of going 15. You can be sure, as Angie Dundee bluntly stated before the fight, they'll be worrying his corner. A good left by Mildenberger to the clay head. right after the end of Wide World of Sports from Waco, Texas, the Orange Men of Syracuse against the Bale of Bay. Goldenberger is carrying the fight at this point. There is no sign of bravado in the champion in his personal behavior as there was in the Patterson fight, the Chevalo fight, the London fight. The end of the last round you must have seen. The champion flawed the challenger. Challenger's right eye severely cut and bleeding at the moment. Now, of course, it's been closed up. The left eye badly bruised. Angie Dundee at the intermission while we broke for the commercial called over to me, said, Howard, this And he held up the sixth round. He said the champion will knock him out in this round. That's what Dundee said. It has to be done in the ring. you can see is cut and bleeding the right eye of the challenger again the champion is using the straight left and the straight right to get at it he is now pawing occasionally at the blood and there's the right again Nothing like the blood that showed in Henry Cooper in the same sixth round, however. It is now dripping down his chest, as you can see. Always a gory sight. A minute and a half to go in this sixth round. Now the champion is working methodically. Wolfgang Mueller exhorting Mildenberger from the corner. Minute 10 seconds left, and this is the sixth round. 
There's no quitting this challenge. Now the left eye is cut. vulnerability to that straight right and straight left has been his undoing. There are only 20 seconds left of this round. getting a terrible beating, or at least was last round, and in the latter half of the round previous. Cuts under both eyes have been closed, but they are susceptible of immediate reopening. And don't forget, too, right after Wide World of Sports, the NCAA game from Waco, Texas, Syracuse against Bell. Funny thing, Mildenberger has been a steady aggressor in this fight in terms of movement but not in terms of punishment administered. Champion has not reopened those cuts. Mildenberger is not a bleeder. The Cooper Those pawing rights. That was a good left. Those pawing rights have little effect other than to move the champion back, which at this point I guess is enough. Is that right again? open now just a glancing blow the champion slipped it the cut is open again and bleeding profusely cut under the right eye Mildenberger is lucky in one respect. The cut is beneath the eye, not above it. If it were above it, he would have been long since blinded and not able to continue the battle. Good left to the side of the champion's head. down so he can come through with the left. Angie Dundee pointed and said the sixth round and it didn't happen and Angie does not have the look of a happy man. Mildenberger is going after 
to him. There is irritation on Clay's face and some puzzlement too. He expected this man to roll over. He was entirely wrong. It was up to Ali to show that he can punch, that he can put a man away. And he hasn't done it tonight. One minute to go in round eight. The eye open again, and the German challenger fighting almost as if in a frenzy. open though not bleeding much yeah, he's in trouble that was it was ruled a knockdown for the mandatory eight count with less than 30 seconds to go in round eight Teddy Waltham ruled out a knockdown although the champion did swing the challenge's body around it was again a straight right that did it I again now bleeding heavily. We'll be back for action. The champion awaiting it in three seconds. There's the bell for round nine. looking for the killer instinct, for the finish. The man is Joe Lewis. He says he doesn't say. <laughs> Joe, tell him yourself. <laughs> well, uh, well, I think that he had him in trouble, I think, three times on the fight, and he don't, he don't show that he can finish him, you know, like... One minute left to go in this round nine, Joe. This is beginning to bear a resemblance to the Patterson fight, where he didn't put Patterson away. He later said he could have, but he didn't. surprised at how hard it is for the champion to reopen that cut. The roars of the crowd deceiving because Mildenberger did not really land. Not with any impact. just been joined as the action for this round begins by Milton Gross, the distinguished syndicated columnist of the New York Post. Milt, quickly, as the fighters fight, your evaluation of the fight thus far, your score. Well, so far to me, how would it have been a shutout? A complete shutout, but there's first Can Clay knock this man out? Has Clay had the knockout punch? The man is obviously strong and has been hitting him occasionally with jabs. But Clay's hands are so fast, too fast for this man, who's been cut up so badly and is bleeding. 
Obviously, Clay can hit him at will. Whether or not he can avoid uh, some of Villenberg's punches or something else again. But to me, it's been a shutout this far. You mean you've scored every round for Muhammad Ali? I have. I've scored every round. There were two rounds where I thought Mildenberg was coming on. In the first minute, a minute and a half or so, he's fine. He hurt the it. champion then. Milton, he hurt the champion then with that blow to the he belly. Well, now this is the sort of thing we've been seeing, where Clay comes back strong at the end. That was a slip. Just a slip. Whatever and however you score it, Milton, oddly, Mildenberger has been the aggressor for many of the moments of this bout. Despite the fact that clearly Muhammad Ali is much ahead of him. I would say so. This man, Mildenberger, fights coming forward. Players are fighting from a distance. Obviously, as strong as a ball or else play, has to have the knockout punch. That's true. Oh, well, the champion is irritated. I think he's irritated largely with his own frustration, almost futility, and his inability to put Mildenberger away. The eye cut is there to reopen as we have only one minute left of this round. Understandably, the partisan German crowd is going wild because Mildenberger is being aggressive. He is hurt and he is desperate and he is being aggressive. And Ali is irritated and taunted by his own inability to put him away. Look at that. The blood pouring out of the right eye again. Mildenberger has one terrible basic boxing weakness open vulnerability above all to the straight right and too often to the straight left. Down. He was knocked down squarely with the straight right. And saved in effect by the mandatory eight count. Not really the best. Muhammad's going to have a lot of explaining to do after this fight about his punch, about his finishing power. in color or black and white. Anybody says this German challenger doesn't have courage, doesn't know courage when he sees it. Now that left is getting into that left eye and has that brutally bleeding. The right eye is still not reopened this round. We're halfway through this. We have a minute and 15 seconds to go in round 11. Applying, it's quite understandable that this crowd should root for their hero. Only 40 seconds to go in this round, and Muhammad has not done it again. cautioning about backhanding, no backhanding. And 
Joe Lewis is telling everybody at ringside just what we've been telling you that Mildenberger is terribly vulnerable to the straight right. It's amazing that the champion hasn't been able to knock him out. Get right after Wide World of Sports, Waco, Texas, Baylor against Syracuse, the initiation of a great right cut to him again, pushed him back. Fighting on courage and courage alone, Mildenberger is. Now the nose is bleeding. A straight right. Oh, Teddy Waltham is stopping this bout. It's a technical knockout at 1 minute 31, 32 seconds by a clock of the 12th round.